All right. The reason I wanted to do this walk, a couple of reasons. Let's, uh, you around Alex? Making sure Alex is here. We're gonna sum up our week as well. I actually went down without a hat. That, then, that, then I realized, dude, it's so darn hot and sunny here now. And there's poo everywhere on the ground. Okay, anyways. The reason I brought you guys down here to do this walk is to tell you what a real life, the day in the life of a real day trader is, okay? Because you, you see all the people post these big old P&Ls, all the stuff like that. But you don't see... Like, do they, most of them don't post every PL. They only post ones that they win. You hardly see people post a loss. And I, I actually admire the people that do post a loss. But when you post a loss, or when you post a win, you know, it, like I keep telling everybody in my other IG Live, it's not how you made the money. That's the important thing to teach other people. It's not, I mean, it's not the dollar amount you make. It's how you make that money that's most important. If you make the money breaking rules, oh, here are the ducks. Where they come from? They just kind of came here from nowhere. It's not how much you make, guys. It's how you made that money. It's also not how much, oh man, my camera's, hold on, I gotta wipe this. It's also not how much you lose. It's how you lost the money, that's important. Some of my best days, guys, were days that I actually lost money, but I properly stopped out. There's, there's days that I felt like I got beat up. I spent all my mental capital just to make a few dollars. Broke every rule, used a million dollars of buying power just to perhaps break even. Those, I mean, and so when you look at the, the results, the results are kind of ambiguous. You see a guy making 10 grand, but you don't see how he made it. You know, a lot of these guys are revenge trading. They have really no process. And so you can really tell how good of a trader they are if you basically look at their language, in my opinion. Because the guys are just focused on dollars. They're trying to portray themselves to the public as some great best trader in the world kind of shit. Hardly they would tell you how they made that money. A lot of these guys are like, okay, you, you see these P&Ls and you're like, wow, they must be so awesome, whatever. But you don't understand, maybe they use like $5 million to make 10,000 because they're stuck upside down, all this stuff. They're pumping to their people, whatever the reason may be. Okay, so it's very difficult to look at someone's P&L and not get, as a human being, envious or jealous or pissed off because you're like, oh, why, why are they making more money than I am? I'm smarter than they are. Why are they doing this? And so if that's the case for you, I suggest you not look at P&Ls anymore. For the longest time, I never posted P&Ls because that doesn't really help much. I post charts because then you can see the entries and the X's and all that stuff. And everybody trades differently, guys. My charts will look different than your charts. Some people like to go smaller size and hold it longer and go, oh, I got the top, I got the bottom, then they brag whatever it is. And then you look at some of my charts and like, oh, what the fuck? You took a tiny move. But that tiny move could be a lot more size. Or I do a lot more of those tiny moves, which adds up to the same thing. So it's very misleading based upon e even if you post a chart or you post a P&L. But at least a chart, you can see the entry and the mindset. A P&L doesn't really tell much. But what you can tell from P&L is this. You can tell by the wild swings in their P&L. The, the traders I admire most, so not the guys are swinging the big sizes up and down every day, up and down big, up and down big, and bragging about it, is the guys that are quiet, post consistent trades, low stress, then go about their day. Those are the ones that, in my opinion, are the good traders because they really don't need validation from the world. I post my stuff, Alex posts our stuff, because we, you know, we, we try to help you guys we, we run actually an education service, so people like to see that stuff. So that's the only reason, right? So even before that, I don't post any of this stuff for 10 years, right? Because the whole thing is I want people to learn. 
And so I'm telling you right now, even if it affects me sometimes, I look at some of these dumb guys, or I think it's dumb. <laughs> you see, everybody has an ego to some point, right? Everybody has an ego. It's like something triggers you, whatever. And you have to turn that off, guys. And the best thing I did for a long time was get off Twitter. Okay? There was, I went on monster streaks with no one even knowing. Because it, it doesn't influence me. I make five grand, some guy makes 10 grand, I'm pissed. So I load up the next day and then I lose. You know, I make 20 grand, some guy makes 100 grand. It's just, you know, it's a vicious cycle, right? So if you're struggling as a trader and almost upset, because I get, the reason I, I'm telling you this, guys, is because I had this conversation with Alex this morning. But Faye, you should post it. We like seeing it because <laughs> it's consistent. That's the difference. So the difference with Faye is this I'm going to tell you right now. Faye is posting the same consistent P&Ls every, pretty much every day, which shows what? She's following the process. It's not up 10 grand one day, down 10 grand another day, up 20,000, down 50,000, things like that. So the reason I like to see these type of P&Ls is so that it's a realistic P&L, which shows other people, this is the way that trading should be, in my opinion. It's not you waking up and let's say, I'm gonna bank 10 grand a day, Tomorrow I'm gonna lose five grand and then t and lose another 10 grand the next day and then double it up the next day, you see what I'm saying? That that pretty much is not a repeatable process that could be sustained. You need to create a sustainable, repeatable process. And that's the the proper way to level up in my opinion. You know, everybody wants a quick, get rich quick one day, bank and leave. That's that's the ideal dream of a lottery person. A person wants to win the lottery. But that's not how trading works, guys. There's very little people, amount of people that actually get very lucky like that. And even if they get very lucky like that, they would think it's skill. They would, they would not believe that they don't know what they're doing. They will end up bleeding everything back and then more. Because that's how human nature works. The guys that are gamblers is going to gamble until they hit rock bottom. And either they, they, they admit that they were gambling or they just go broke and in denial for er forever, right? So so today was a very slow day for me, for the whole room actually, because we you know we trade small caps and there's hardly anything moving. And I'm like, dude, there's absolutely nothing moving. And so there's two things that happen during this time where there's nothing moving. You can either force something to happen by sizing up and forcing something that doesn't exist and making up scenarios in your head to justify why you're doing that. Okay, and or number two, going out outside of your niche to try to find a trade. So if you're trading a small cap and all of a sudden there's nothing moving in small cap and then, oh, Apple is moving, let's start trading Apple. What the hell do you have, what business do you have trading Apple if you're a small cap trader? Unless you traded Apple before. Okay, so those two types of scenarios are very, very dangerous. And the longer you sit around, the more chances you are of deviating and breaking your discipline. It's like, how can you go to the casino, sit there and not gamble? How can I go to a bar, sit there and not drink? So sometimes you have to remove yourself from the trigger points, right? And so I do these IG lives because it actually helps me guys, as well as trying to help you guys, but by helping you guys, it helps myself. So this is why we always talk about find a tab. When you're bored, this is the sort of stuff you talk, to your tab about the same thing i'm talking to you about you know it's you have to keep it, there's a saying that says let me see uh idle hands are the devil's playground idle hands are the devil's playground idle hands meaning when you're bored you have nothing to do these these negative thoughts come up these everything bad happens when you're busy with life everything is good you have a routine you go work out, whatever. But when you're bored at home, you're like, oh, shit. What are you going to do? Let's drink. Let's smoke out. Oh, shit. My weekend's gone because I just fucking got drunk and smoked out. And so that's what happens. Same thing with trading. And this is how you properly level up. You have no idea because you... this. So I, I started... Thank God I started trading before the social media days where people didn't really post and much stuff like this. And so I was trading by myself thinking that I was a shitty trader because the only people that bragged were 
guys that were making big money, but then they never talked about their losses. So I was a really consistent trader. You know, I started with $300 a day. The same thing as I always preach you guys, right? You start with $300 a day. That became $500 a day, $1,000 a day, $3,000 a day. Next year, I was trading $10,000 a day in profits, $50,000 a day. I had $100,000 days, even million dollar days. I had a, a more than, I can't even count the number of hands and the number of five figure days I had in a row. You know, those, those stats I, I never tracked. I had a year where I only had 10 lost days. I mean, this, it was pretty crazy. Uh, you can probably find some pictures. I, I don't like to post it much, but it doesn't show anything because it doesn't show that the fact that I've been working my ass off for 10 years before that point, taking a bunch of losses and leveling up to the point where I built a bankroll so that I, I can get away with it. The reason why someone can make $10,000 a wet day because they're willing to lose $20,000. If you're making $500 a day, you must be willing to lose $1,000 a day to make it. You know, that, that's the way it's, it works to give yourself a little range, right? So can your bankroll take multiple hits over two times your average? So you can use that kind of as a barrier, right? Of when to increase your size. So it's kind of almost exponential, man. To go from $500 a day to $1,000 a day, if you're $500, you, you're, you're cool with losing a two days work. I'm just saying, right? So that should be your max daily loss, maybe two days or three days, right? But now you, you move up to 10,000. Are you ready to lose 20,000 or 30,000 two to three days? You cannot unless your bankroll can sustain it. So these guys are trading with million dollar accounts or whatever it may be, and they can't take many of those hits. And so that's why I say it's very misleading, guys, because I'll, I'll give you a fact. One of my friends joined a, this was, man, 10 years ago. One of my friends joined a prop trading group. Uh, it's no longer around. He was swinging up and down, literally, I'm not joking, like 10 to 20 to $50,000 a day. And this guy probably had only $200,000 in his trading account. And he was swinging up and down $50,000 a day. You know, he would do the, the old, if I lose, I double down. And it always works, guys. You keep adding until you're out of the position. That's what they used to do. Until you had that one they call a black swan. But the black swan happens all the time. All the time. All you take, need to do is get one. So this guy, he was my best friend at the time. I was making just like a few hundred, but then he inspired me. I, I said, this guy's a dumbass. <laughs> to me, he's a dumbass. But how is he able to make so much fucking money? Okay, and so I started to increase my size because I was a pussy. I was actually scared. I, know I, was, I was comfortable making my $2,000 a day, wherever it was. That's a great living, right? No stress. And then I put more size on, and that's, that's how I, so I give them kind of credit, how I grew my balls because it takes something like that. But at the same time, it's, it's the methodical methodical process it wasn't like one day i wake up i go oh i'm gonna so i cut i'm gonna cut the story short short right so this guy you know all it takes is one bad hit for him to so he got stuck on this co company called refco rf refco i don't even remember he went fucking bankrupt he went to the penny stocks and that's when i started trading that shit because that's how i knew about it but anyways it doesn't take that much when you have 200 grand in your fucking account okay and with leveraging he could probably buy millions of dollars right and then you take a fifty dollar thousand dollar hit, so now you're down to one fifty. But instead of eating the loss, he added more because he always got away with it. So next thing you know, he's all fucking in, over leveraged, and all, and when you're over leveraged, because you got four times buying power, intraday buying power, right? And you're all it takes is twenty five percent a stock to go twenty five percent down for you to lose a hundred percent, and that is the problem with over leveraging. And that's why I said, man, if you, so no one really talks about how to properly level up. You have to have the bankroll to sustain these losses. And usually it's two to three times your, your average day. Because if you take a look at it logically, right? If, you, if your goal is to make $100 a day, you must be willing to lose $200 that day. Which is normal, two days of work. So now I scale up to 10,000, that's 20,000, 30,000. How many of those hits can you take? And now you get to the $50,000. And so don't compare your chapter to them. And always, 
This happens. I'm telling you right now. Alex can confirm this. Alex, I'll bring Alex on. He'll confirm this shit. It's not really how much you make, guys. It's how much you make plus how much you do not lose. You could be making $50,000 every day and take a million dollar hit. Wipe out your entire fucking year. I've seen guys, this is the hardest hurdle to overcome because I've, I've, I've gone through this hurdle. I can make money every day. But if you don't control that one lost day, you know, you're done. You're done. So the, the, the most successful traders that are long term, if you take a look at their big losses, their big losses are not, not that big in, rel, in relation to their wins. Okay? So you have to keep those losses down. And how do you do that? You have to have a system. The system cannot just be based on emotion. And you can tell if you're trading well by taking a look at your P&L curve and seeing is it consistent or is it wild swings up and down. Okay? So the first thing you do is you take a look at your P&L. And if your P&L is getting wiped away by just one or two few bad trades, you have to fix that. A lot of these guys, a lot of the people trading only focus on making money. They don't focus on the risk management part. And I guarantee you, if you focus on the risk management part and you just be consistent, making $500 a day, how much is that a year? Pull up my Twitter. A million dollars a year, guys, is $4,000 a day. You don't need us to be swinging up twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 a day to make a million a year. And at the end of the year, I've always made more than most of these guys, you know, and they're like, how the fuck are you doing? Slow, methodical, every day, chip it away. Because, you know, it's up to you. If you want to balls to the wall, then that's up to you. But your banker has to be able to sustain it. So don't worry about these guys. Just smile in your head, make your $500 a day, and see where you are at the end of the month. You know, if you make $500 a day, that's, let me see, times four days a week. That's, dude, that's $2,000 a week. That's $8,000 a month. So from making $500 a day, you can make $8,000 a month. That's fucking insane, right? Up of $500. You don't need to be swinging up and down. And you preserve your capital and all that stuff. So, and that's how the secret to sizing up works, in my opinion. A lot of people do not understand the bankroll is very important. Because you have to be very perfect if you don't have enough bankroll to cover those swings. Because you will have off days. And you have to trade to the point where the, the, the size doesn't really matter to you much. Because you can take a loss and be okay with it. A lot of these guys, they have to win because the losses are so big. Because they don't have this, the capability to stopping out. Because it's ego, whatever the reason may be. Maybe they, you know, they, they're gambling. And so if you set your max loss, in my opinion, two days, guys, how's that going to hurt you, right? And so you be diligent about it. You keep at it, at it. And so that's why today I was like, man, I can either stay here. So this happens to me a lot. I sit here and I'm like, dude, I'm so bored. $2,000 is not going to make a difference in my life. So I end up gambling it away. Being bored is entertainment. But then when I look back at the end of the week, I'm like, shit, how much have I pissed away? If I piss away $2,000 every fucking day, that's $8,000 a week I'm pissing away. And now you scale it down to your level. If you're just pissing away $100, $200 every fucking day, that is lunch money, dinner money, every fucking day. That's what you're in. So, I challenge you guys to do this this weekend. Go and take a look at your P&L, guys. And see, just take a look at it. See the swings. See if you are actually gambling or have a process. Are you swinging wildly up and down? Or you have consistent numbers? Okay. And it's okay to have a swing up, but the swing down is the problem. If, 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 if you are having one day bleed an entire week of gains, that's, in my opinion, it's not sustainable. So work on that. How do you work on that? A lot of these guys don't even understand about stop losses. They don't even know, because if I knew that I could put a max daily loss on my account, I, I would never get a $100,000 loss one day, you know? Back then, I would have $100,000 loss, $50,000 loss because I had no control over my account. And my account was so big where, you know, it didn't fucking matter. But when I think about it, it's so stupid. It's so stupid just to be like, so like, oh, whatever, I'm letting fuck a couple thousand here and there. But it all adds up. 
it's all relative, right, guys? Like, when I had my big day, that Fannie Man, Fannie Mae day, the slippage was like 200 grand each time I traded because I traded so much size. And I'm like, whatever, because I was up, up like a million bucks. But then I'm thinking about it now. I'm like, dude, that's a lot of fucking money. You know, you have to treat each trade seriously, in my opinion, because that, that's the that's the habit. If, if you get in the habit of saying, oh, I'm going to be whatever, let this shit go, that little shit is going to get you. And be careful about rounding up. Because I have these days, it's like, let's say you're up like 900 dollars and you're like oh shit i only need a hundred dollars more to make a thousand so i can feel good and then you you force a trade and next you know your 900 goes down to 400 dollars. trying to make a hundred dollars you lose 400 bucks so you have to be very conscious about that and it's okay guys to have a lost day don't force yourself to have a green day i post those how much dollars a day average those are averages just remember it's okay because some days you'll make more some days you make less but don't feel like you have to close green every day. Closing green feels fucking great. It feels great. But don't force it. Let the PL take care of itself. I really don't know how much I make, guys, until I close my trade. Because I, when I'm trading, my my eyes are not on the PL. My eyes are on the chart. And I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna do. And then when it's all said and done, I look, I go, oh shit, that's how much I make. Sometimes I'm like, oh shit, I made a lot more than I thought. Sometimes I make a lot less than I thought. But by doing that, you trade well. I'm not talking to you about hiding your PL, guys. That's the dumbest shit. Okay, in my opinion, it works for some people because they have a big bankroll. If you don't have a big bankroll, you're gonna be nervous, wreck, trying to figure out what your PL is. And if you have a max data loss, you have to know what your, your max loss is, right? So you have to see your PL after each trade. So try whatever tricks you want to do. If it works for you, it works for you guys. I'm presenting to you the things that works for me. And trust me, when you start to trade well, the money will take care of itself. The biggest hurdle to avoid is to have one loss wipe out weeks or months worth of work. You have to put a fence around that. I'm gonna give an analogy to real life, okay? In real life, you get drunk, you pass out, you miss a day at work, so what? But there are certain circumstances in life that is a horrific bad beat, like a DUI, like fucking overdosing and ending up in fucking hospital, shit like that. You can have whatever you want, but you need to put a fence around the destructive black swan event that happens all the time such as max daily loss there will be a situation where if you do not have a max daily loss you may potentially lose your entire account because you don't the worst is when you're up and you're on a winning streak and you haven't lost and you broke rules to get where you are and you got rewarded by being at bad actions all it takes is one dumb stock to fuck you up so don't be egotistical put that so same thing with a DUI I make sure I take an Uber instead of driving my car I can get drunk all I want that is not going to affect my life but getting a DUI will negatively affect my life for a long long time so those are the black swan kind of events right guys and so like today Making another two thousand dollars is not gonna do shit for me. But if I stick around and I'm bored, I know myself, I may lose it back and then get frustrated and mess up my mental capital for the tomorrow or whatever it may be. But I always walk around with a max daily loss on my account, and so I'm okay with that. So at least if I fuck up, I'll lose that. But it still sucks. So you have to determine what your max daily loss is, and I'll give you a trick on the max daily loss. Because what happens is this, you can still circumvent around that because a lot of the brokers do not auto liquidate. So you can choose whether or not they, you set them to auto liquidate or not. If you do not, you can hold on to a loser, turn a max daily loss into a quadruple max daily loss, which I've done before. I refuse to get out of that stock because I'm like, shit, that means I cannot trade anymore. So I hold on to that losing position. Right, guys? How many times have you lost, hold on to the losing position? Just because you didn't add doesn't mean that's it's okay you need to take the loss so you have a disciplinary issue and the reason i bring this up is i get asked all the time even today 
Oh, Bell, I can't seem to be following my discipline. I always fuck up because I get too greedy or I don't take the loss. What do I need to do? Why are you asking me this? Look in the mirror, slap yourself, put a fence around all the things I did. Oh, I don't want to use a stop loss. The market maker is going to uh, trick me. Well, that's up to you. You do not have, you have not earned the right to do a mental stop. A lot of us do not earn the right. You have to earn the right to do a mental stop, okay? Until then, use a hard stop, things like that. Whew. All right, I want to bring Alex in so he can recap what he did for the week. Hey, where you at, Alex? Raise your hand. Here we go. Waiting for Alex. Hey, you see me? Oh, you're driving, bro. What are you doing? Uh, dude, you go on your walks, and right here it's <laughs> raining in New Jersey, so I can't go on my walk, so I'm driving around. Ah, uh, cool. All right, man, it's like what you a... say, bro. You need you need right. something to kind of get you away from the screens, and this is kind of my way of getting away, just driving around when it's raining. That's good, man. Because we, we don't trust each other, man. We sit there and just do stupid shit will happen. Yeah, and man. You say it all the time, man. You say it all the time. We go looking for trades. We're gonna find it. So for me personally, I have to eliminate myself from the situation, or else I'm gonna be stuck there all day until four o'clock, and then maybe even trading after hours. Yeah, today you did well. You did you did not fucking trade Apple. It wasn't while I see you trade Apple. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, <laughs> that's the telltale sign, bro. That's the telltale sign. So this is the like, thing. So so Alex, so tell me tell me how much you made today and what you made the week. So that's the thing. Trading's not about just making money every day. It's making money when it's the right day to make money. When the opportunity is there, correct. then you so so, it's correct. Like so uh, let me give you an example. Today was only a one hundred dollar day for me, but yesterday was a nine thousand dollar day. So how does that happen, right? How are you green $9,000 one day and then green $100 the next day? Aren't you supposed to be making the same amount of money every day? And the truth of the matter is, as traders, right, as traders, our goal is to trade when we see opportunity or when we see an edge. Yesterday, there was an unbelievable edge on so many setups. There was APDN, there was TTPH, there was so many setups that fit our criteria, that fit our niche, that fit our process. So it allowed me to size up on those trades. Whereas today, there was really nothing moving, man. So as a trader, as someone that's working for their money, why should I risk my hard-earned money on a trade or a setup that doesn't make sense or that the edge is not that present? Today, Correct. there really wasn't much setups, to be honest. And if I'm just being completely honest with myself, if I took the day off, it would be even better than taking a $100 gain today because I would preserve mental capital. Today I felt myself. Um, today I felt myself just trading because I was bored. So as soon as I recognized that, I shut myself down and walked away. So a hundred dollar day, you know, is life changing to a lot of people. But based for me, based for you, it's just basically a scratch day. So I ended the week uh, twenty two thousand dollars today. I made four or five thousand on Monday. I made nine hundred on Tuesday. Made five, six thousand on Wednesday, ten, nine thousand on Thursday, and then a hundred dollars today. So every day I'm showing up to the market, and slowly but steadily, these gains are adding up. So and get get it back to what I'm saying. What was your biggest loss for the month? For the month, maybe maybe five hundred bucks. Maybe I might even be green all month to be honest. But the the truth of the matter is that. But the My key losses. is the, that's the thing, right? The key is you, you have learned from last year. Remember those losses last year, thirty thousand worth. I don't, I don't want to remember it. But that pain, that pain of those losses is what molds you into the trader that you are today. These days, man, I'm making I don't know, like thousand to four thousand dollars a day, working less than an hour a day, with no stress. But you're not and losing. That's a thing. Not losing. And when I do lose, I've even gotten it to the point where my losses knock on wood is less than a day's worth of work, right? Because like you say, man, if it takes you a day to make back your loss, you're set. But if you're losing a week's worth, a month's worth, a year's worth, then you get into trouble and then you start dominoing. You know, I and, see then, and, then, these... and this is what I want to show people because you were swinging up and down 30,000. People thought, damn, you're making 10 million a year. <laughs> you know, and that's, the, yeah. that's, that's it's not how much you swing up and down. It's, it, you have to control the losses. So that's why... You know, this is a perfect example where Alex made a hundred dollars a day, but he's still making a lot more money than these guys are swinging up and down a shitload of money, but then losing all their money. 
Exactly. So it also goes back to something that you mentioned earlier in the video that I don't know if a lot of people caught is you have to have a size that you are comfortable with that doesn't really phase you, right? So actually, when I was trading larger size, I was trading, I don't know, like 80 to 100,000 shares of these stocks. Uh, that's a lot of ridiculous size. So now when I've cut it down to 10,000 or 5,000, I'm basically immune to it. And because I'm immune to it, it allows me to let the trade work out in my favor. So for me or for anyone else, you have to choose a size that you don't really panic with because the more right. you panic, the more you get in your head and you don't allow the trade to work out. And this is what you said before that has, that not many people have picked up on. The, your body tells you when you're fucking up, when you should get out. It's your stress meter. When you are stressed, that is your fucking indicator right there. Not VWAP, not none of these <laughs> RSI indicators, right? None Correct. of these indicators. The, the human body is the best indicator. When you start to feel fucking nervous, you know you're fucked. You should prepare to get the fuck out instead of trying to fight. Exactly, exactly. So let me, let me kind of go back to where that came from, right? So I worked with Dr. Brett Steenbarker, who's like arguably the number one trading coach in the industry. And his approach is very statistically based, right? You look at your stats and you try to improve based on your stats. We noticed that my trading went downhill after 1030. So I eliminated that time frame from my trading and my P&L exponentially grew. But the other thing that he said is that, you know, trading should be boring when you're doing it right, right? When you're doing it right, it should be boring. So if you are sitting there and you are stressed, you're probably doing something wrong. So you should be using that stressed feeling as a trigger to tell you, hey, you know what? I'm doing something wrong. It's time to get out of the trade. So I've been doing a lot of self-talk lately rather than cursing at the stocks and telling them, fuck this stock, go down, shit, <laughs> motherfucker. I'm telling myself, you know what? I'm wrong. I'm saying it out loud. I'm wrong. And if I say that out loud, it kind of reinforces something in my head to say, you know what? Just get out of the trade. Make a new plan, reassess it, and take it from there. So that feeling of being stressed and verbalizing it has been helping me kind of identify it as well. And, and that's been helping me because I, as old as I am, there's always room for improvement. And I've been, yeah. I've just noticed, my stocks have been much improved. Unbelievable, bro. It's been unbelievable. And even your long game is improving. Your long game is improving too. And so that's the key. So I make a lot of money, but I lose a lot of money back on stupid shit because I fight, I fight. And that's, you know, that's because I didn't have a mentor back then. Back then, it was a wild, wild west. You know, we didn't use hard stocks, all this. So I'm trying to implement, even at this stage in my life where I can be content just doing the same fucking shit. But yeah. you always have to adapt. You always have to adapt. And it's like, why the fuck am I, I buying these stocks when it's so obvious I'm wrong? Just get the fuck out. And the reason why also is because of this. I'm sized too much. And if you're sized too much and you're wrong, it's very difficult to get out. You Correct. have to size appropriately, okay? Smaller size actually makes you more money because you can hold on to the position longer and not get freaked out and not be stressed out. Correct, and that's why we have the 30% rule. So on the front side of the move, we have very clear <laughs> risk parameters to make sure that we stay safe on the front side because the front side shorting is the most dangerous type of shorting. But if we have risk rules in place and risk parameters in place, the losses are not only manageable, they are controllable. And when the backside does hit, you're going to have essentially triple the size because you're going to be using more size because the setup is more confirmed. And that's how you can not only make back your loss plus more. So all of these methods, all of these routines, all of these different types of processes took me and Bao years and hundreds of thousands of dollars to lose, right? So these are the lessons that you learn by yourself. And it might take you 10 years. It might take you five years. But... Me and Bao, not only it took us time, it took us money to lose as well. So that's what you get when you join MIC. You get to learn all of the mistakes that we made uh, so that you don't have to pay the same price to learn it as well, right? Yep, exactly right. And so that's what I want to talk to you guys about. Today was a very slow day, but you know what we do? Dude, Alex is driving around, enjoying his life. I'm walking around, exercising, enjoying being happy versus sticking around in the hopes of what? Make a few grand more? Would that change our life? But really. if we fucking get if we get stuck, how horrible would we feel heading into the weekend feeling like shit? It's not That's what money, I told Bao too, man. Like I told Bao, I'm like, bro, even it doesn't matter if we had a slow day today, we walked away green. <clears throat> if we walked away red, I would 100% know that we would both ruin our weekends because we're perfectionists. 
we always want to do better and we always want to improve. So at the end of the day, even if you have a small green day, even if you didn't fucking bank, even if you didn't do this, you preserve mental capital to come back stronger the next day, the next week and improve, right? Yesterday was $9,000, right? I had no idea I was going to show up and make that much. If I came in today with the same mindset of trying to make nine grand, I would have lost nine grand. Instead, I recognize that it's a slow day, take it a little bit slower, and then use our process on slow days to take advantage of it. Yep, and that's what we say, take what the process gives you. A lot of people say, take what the market, but the correct term, in my opinion, is take what the process gives you. So if you, want, the- to inc- if you want to increase your dollar amount, increase your, uh, refine your process, make it better. That's what I'm trying to do every day. Correct. My- and the process, it also includes a routine of walking away, right? So Bao is walking and I'm driving. It's not because we need the fresh air. Sure, we do. Sure, I want to get out. But by walking away, we're actually saving ourselves <clears throat> money and saving ourselves stress and actually, you know, living our lives as well, right? Because I'm telling you, remember, we, I, I talked about, man, before, we, before Alex and I started this service, this MIC community, we, I, I told Alex, I'm very close to, do, to fit, breaking the code. Remember I keep saying? And that came with a zombie hour. So you know what, you know what breaking the code was? It wasn't finding a new indicator. It wasn't doing something. It was walking the fuck away. Yeah, just like at when a casino, we, right? When we discovered the optimal time to walk away, dude, that was it. You make more by walking away because you're not losing back. So that was the missing Correct. link that, that started us to start MIC at last. We had the strategies. We know the technical analysis. We know all that. The problem we couldn't crack was Man, we would have these losses that you don't understand why. And, the, and we thought we had to be more technical to do more filings research. Read the filings. No, <laughs> dude. Walk the fuck away. Get yeah, the man. money and walk away. Exactly. So that, exactly. So and it yields to you being guys. happier too, man. Like if I'm sitting at my desk from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Or if I'm sitting at my desk from 7 a.m. to 10.30 a.m., I'm going to be a lot happier in my life because I'm not wasting away five hours a day extra sitting at a computer to try to make a couple extra thousand dollars a day. That's not really going to change my life. And the worst part is even if you do make that extra thousand dollars, one bad zombie trade is going to eliminate that plus more. Yep. That's the thing. You want to make money when it's in your favor, when the odds are in your favor. And that's what it is. If you don't want to fight Mike Tyson, when in his prime, you know, you, you wait for him to like, you know, be old, then you leave. That's it. So, so we know which times are optimal to trade and which ones are not. And so that's what it is, man. We, we're trying to fight the older Tyson, not the good Tyson, right? So Exactly. And so, again, these zombie rules are for short sellers. There's plenty of members that in MIC that start their trading at 1030 zombie times because that is when the long bias traders have an edge. So the short bias traders take advantage of 9.30 to 10.30. The long bias traders take advantage from 10.30 to 2. And the short bias traders come back from 2 to 4. So knowing these different timing things took us years, man, years and tons of money to learn, man. And now it's kind of a part of our routine and our process. And now it's starting to pay dividends, right? Correct. So there you guys heard it, man. Sometimes you just got to walk away. Walking away is the secret to longevity of trading. You cannot just sit there in the casino and expect to pump out 5,000 every hour. Because certain exactly. hours are just bad. You know, you go on a cold streak, whatever. So, all right, man. Have a good weekend, guys. You anything else to say? That's it, man. That's it. Uh, if you guys have any questions, text Tosh at 213-458-5997. Oh, talk about the, tomorrow. For, for guys, weekend mentoring. We, we, we hardly ever talk about that, man. Yeah, but, but, like, yeah let me give a, a go, quick, go for it. Yeah, yeah so... You know, we don't want all the education to stop on the weekends. You know, the weekends are the time that most people have uh, to learn and to review. So we actually created this on day one of MIC. It's called Weekend Mentoring. Every Saturday at 1 p.m. market time in the Weekend Mentoring section in MIC, we host a QA. and a So it's kind of like a speed dating of questions, right? You post your question and all the moderators and a bunch of the team members come and answer your question. So it's basically like the FAQs of trading. And we have a bunch of archives on this as well. So if you have any questions that maybe weren't answered during the week or you have a chart that needs some review, it's basically a one hour long speed dating Q&A that happens every single Saturday at 1 p.m. market time. This is so, this has been going on for almost two years. We have an archive of almost two years of this. Yeah. 
And it's like we have two years, so almost about 100 weeks of questions answered. So as a new trader, guys, so this is a resource that's often overlooked at MIC. As a new trader, you go into this FAQ, that's the weekend mentoring, it's start reading the questions. You know, that, that's the thing. Wait, wait. And then, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, you, you, you go there, that's another resource for you to learn. Because sometimes as a new trader, the hardest part is you don't know what questions to ask. Because you don't, you're not experienced enough to know what to ask. You know? And so that's where the FAQ is. And that's a weekend mentoring, guys. So keep that in mind. Cool. I'm going to keep it short and sweet. I'll let you guys go back to work and keep driving, Alex. Stay safe, brother. Awesome. Later, Bow. Have a good weekend, bro. See you guys.